I know some people were surprised I didn't have Superman Son of Kal-El by Tom Taylor in my top 10 worst comics of the year so far. And I think in most years, Superman Son of Kal-El would, would make the top 10 list. I think it's really bad. And quite frankly, I was like having to cram Marvel stuff that was in there. Like I didn't want the entire list to be DC. But the bottom of the barrel kind of is coming out from DC comics these days. And Superman Son of Kal-El, in my opinion, is, is one of the bad comics. It's not the worst. You know, it is boring. It is overly dialogue heavy. Not really a superhero comic. It's more of a coming of age romance story. And issue 13 is supposed to be important. That's what they told us. This is the introduction of Dreamer into the DC Comics universe. And this character is not only in the CW Supergirl series. I guess she's in the Arrowverse. But she's also a distant relative of Dream Girl from the Legion of Superheroes. So there's a connection between john kent as superman this weird fake version of superman and dreamer there's a reason i guess that they should know each other this comic book suffers from a lot of what tom taylor's run has suffered from so if you've enjoyed it so far you probably thought this this issue was just dandy but if you haven't really liked it this suffers from a lot of the same stuff but a couple of other things because you are introducing this uh, new trans character i will give the writer's credit tom taylor and nicole mains who has a co-writing credit on this if you didn't know the character was trans, like it's never even brought up. It's not really a part of what happens with the character. But because the character is trans, there is some validation. That is definitely a writing trope that you're going to see in modern comic books when you're dealing with a character that's from a marginalized group. So that is absolutely in there. This is a pretty boring comic book. And if you like people standing around and commiserating and talking, this is likely the comic book for you. Let's get into it and talk about why it's not a very good debut for Dreamer, in my opinion. We get a bit of fallout from the last issue where Jay Nakamura's identity was revealed to the world. He accidentally took his mask off. He was uh, recording. It went out on all the news, and people are talking about him. And I'll be honest, I think this is supposed to be like uh, fake news or whatever. But what these reporters are saying when it comes to Jay Nakamura kind of rings true. With the information that is available, this is how a normal person would feel Questions about the growing reach of this new source as the man behind the mask has been revealed to be 17-year-old Gamoran J. Nakamura. Yes, as soon as I found out the truth was being led by a 17-year-old kid behind a mask who had bias issues because of his nationality. Yes, that's a good reason to question the authenticity being given by the truth and J. Nakamura. No wonder so much of their quote-unquote reporting has been against President Bendix. This has been political from the start. Wake up, sheeple. Nakamura is the son of the ex-president of Gamora. Yes, absolutely. These are all biases, and any normal person would have to call into question the authenticity and the truthfulness of what the truth is putting out there because of Jay Nakamura's allegiance to his mother and all the other things that go into that. So I think this is supposed to feel like, oh my goodness, they're lying about him. But it pretty much feels like the truth. And John Kent is worried about his boyfriend, Jay Nakamura, and his safety. There are people lining up, and he decides he needs to fly him away to the Fortress of Solitude, and when they get there, they are very surprised to find a visitor in the Fortress of Solitude. And this felt out of character, in my opinion, for John Kent. He just gets like real mad and starts yelling at this character. We've never met her within the DC Comics universe. This is Dreamer. He's like, what are you doing here? And she's like, I'm Nia Nal. And I'm here because this is where you're supposed to be. And it turns out she can travel through not only people's dreams, but she can travel through the dreams of animals. And we do know that Clark Kent has a zoo of exotic creatures in the basement of the Fortress of Solitude. And apparently she traveled through one of the dreams of the animals. That seems like it would be very difficult to navigate if you were a superhero that could travel through dreams. You would actually have to pinpoint the animal that realizes it's in the Fortress of Solitude and recognizes Clark Kent, Superman, and his son, John Kent. But apparently she was able to do that. And she says, the dreams led me here for a reason. This is important. Superman, I have something to show you. And then we get the only semblance of action within the comic book. And this is probably half the comic, maybe just a skosh less than half the comic. Not surprising because this character's name is Dreamer. This is a dream sequence. The opening scene is Joker essentially crucified and murdered in Gotham. And Batman is on the case. And all the superheroes have come to Gotham, I guess, to aid him looking for Joker's killer. And then wouldn't you know it, they drop a gas bomb. And he releases Joker gas on the city. Oh my goodness, is this Joker in a diabolical plot? Of course not. It's not going to be about Joker. This is going to be about Bendix. But it starts turning everyone into Jokers. 
And I will give Tom Taylor this. If he wanted President Bendix to come off as the most powerful villain in the history of superhero comics, he absolutely accomplishes it here because he pretty much murders the entire Justice League in the span of two pages. Pariah did not kill the entire Justice League that fast in Justice League 75, also known as Death of the Justice League, which unfortunately for Nicole Maines and Tom Taylor is happening as we speak. And the only survivors that we see are Bruce Wade and John Kent. And wouldn't you know it, it isn't only Joker toxin. They've thrown some kryptonite in there. And Bendix, I guess, is framing Joker for killing the Justice League. I guess that sounds like a Joker plan. And then we see Bruce Wayne get his head blown off. This would be a lot more impactful if we weren't right in the middle of the Justice League and we actually hadn't seen them all die. And it would be a much bigger accomplishment on the part of Dreamer if we didn't already know that this was all for naught. They were going to die there, apparently in a week's time, when Bendix unfurls this play and destroys everything. Or they were going to die a few weeks later in Justice League 75. It really takes the sting out of the impact of whatever they're trying to accomplish here, which I think is pretty funny. You would imagine the editorial staff would talk to somebody like a Tom Taylor. He's supposed to be one of their superstars and be like, hey, we're actually going to kill the Justice League off. Maybe this isn't the right time to have Dreamer dream about the Justice League dying so they can save him. So it's just not going to work because the plans that we have going on just aren't going to do all that well. But as I mentioned, John Kent recognizes the character. He's met her great, 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 great something or other granddaughter. I don't know. In the future in Dream Girl. And they have this nice conversation. And of course, because Dreamer is an LGBTQ character within DC Comics, you have to have a nice page full of validation. Actually, I think it's two pages where she's talking about how I can't control my powers and I just got them. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm half humid. And John's like, I got this box from your great, 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 great granddaughter or whatever. And she wanted you to have this, even though she thinks that you are the greatest superhero of all times. He says, John Kitt says, because you got to verbally flate the character with the warning you've sounded. You may have just saved the entire Justice League. That's a pretty good start for a superhero. And whatever you think of yourself now, I can tell you Nura thinks you're the greatest dreamer to ever live. But, you know, no pressure. And then they go on and talk about how she is essentially one of the greatest superheroes of all time and an inspiration to all the characters of the 31st century. Of course, John was a part of the Legion of Superheroes during Brian Michael Bendis' unreadable Legion of Superheroes storyline, which I think should finally be over here <laughs> in a few weeks. And that's kind of the story. You get a little fallout for the, the previous issue. They show up at the Fortress of Solitude, they talk, they show the dream, and then they talk a lot more. There is one other thing that I want to point out, because in a lot of comic books, there's a lot of stupid sayings like, oh, I'm superheroing, or I'm all about the science, and here we get damseling. And the funny part is, is when they go to the Fortress of Solitude, we get John Kent flying with Jay Nakamura, just like Superman would fly with Lois, and he is damseling the character on the way to the Fortress of Solitude. I was very happy to see a very enormous key, although I thought the Fortress of Solitude was in the Bermuda Triangle for some reason. I thought Brian Michael Bendis did that, but here it's back in like Antarctica or whatever, and we get this, this terrible dialogue, just really bad conversation. If you're going to have a comic book full of conversation, it needs to be done well. This is not done well. John is going to go fight Bendix so he can stop the murder of the Justice League so they can die in a couple weeks. And he's going to go without Jay. And this is what Jay says. Are you seriously going to go fight the bad guy while keeping me safely locked away in your castle? What? No. But I can see how it looks exactly like that. Dreamer says, you are kind of damseling him. Jay says, you're totally damseling me. John can't take down Bendix. John says, I just saw him murder me and a lot of people I love. And Jay says, Bendix will twist anything you do. You'd be presented as a one-man foreign army invading my country. Superman can't topple the government. Gamorans have to stand up. It can't be an outside force. It needs to be a rebellion. Tomorrow, the truth releases everything we have on Bendix. And then I'm going home. It's my people. He's enslaved. It's my fight. But you don't have to stay locked away in your castle. You can come with me. <laughs> like it's such bad dialogue. It's so stupid. I don't. I hope people don't talk about Damsling in any other comic books. Um, is this the worst comic book out on the market? Absolutely not. There's way worse stuff from DC Comics. Like there's some, like Tom Taylor for all his faults, he's not T. Franklin. He's not Stephanie Phillips. He's not Clune Rad. You know, he's not a lot of these really bad writers out there. He's not Tim Sheridan. Let's put it that way. So it's better than some of the other bad comic books, but it's still not good. 
this is a collector's item. You know, this is going to be a hot comic book because there is a first appearance of a character from a TV show in Dreamer. But if you buy it to read it, I think for the most part, you'll be disappointed if you actually like superhero comic books. If you like LGBTQ coming of age, like romance novels and stuff like that, you'll probably like this comic book because that's really truthfully who this is made for. It's not really made for Superman fans. That's why we're seeing a lot of people have kind of dipped out of buying the comic book and supporting it. And that's too bad. One person who can't accept the truth about any of this is Tom Taylor himself. He's out there bragging about how this is the number one best-selling comic book, uh, whatever. Uh, <laughs> he was talking about how people are saying this thing isn't selling, but it's one of the best-selling comic books. This is a few months ago, but I always like point this one out because it's so funny. And Tom Taylor really looked like an absolute you know, dumbass when he, when he came out here because everyone knows Superman Son of Kal-El is dropping like a, a rock. People just don't want to read it. 